Shut up and sit down. You're listening to the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast, a proud part of the Section 328 family. Follow us on Twitter at Cheaters in VR Pin. Now, live from ringside, it's Mr. Workrate and JC. Well, welcome back, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Cheaters Never Pin Podcast. We're glad you're here today. Aren't we, Tom? I, I'm shocked that you guys came back, yes. personally. In fact, there's like a strong core of you that are here every week to listen to us run our gums. Bless it's you. Really appreciated. You should probably seek help for whatever is causing the fact that you're listening to this every week. <laughs> hey, maybe, maybe people enjoy listening to us talk. That, that, that's possible. It's possible. Unlikely. But, you know. But thank you, you know, anyway. I, I haven't read any books on this, but maybe kind of one of those early rules of podcasting is <laughs> don't, don't insult don't. the actual listeners you do have. <laughs> we call them the dirty bitches, Tom. Come on, buddy. <laughs> but that, that's with love. <laughs> okay. Well, you can still love an addict. Jesus, dude. You still have to uh, like I've... what they do. <laughs> Look, you, you're not you're not twisting words on me like you did with Dan. <laughs> He's gonna shit it. me next time he sees me. He should. You said he wasn't a person. No. Again, <laughs> you're putting words in my mouth that I did not say. <laughs> well, instead of tracking back to the rambling mess that was last week's show, no one got that far, JC. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> if they did, God bless you. You were already blacked out by that point when it got to that. Uh, we actually have uh, wrestling stuff to talk about today, which is fun. Hey. Even in a slow news week, there's a few little things, which is nice. We'll talk about uh, a WWE legend being released. It's not who you think. Did you see that? Did you see that tease there? I buried the lead a little bit on it. It's pretty funny. And I just used kind of a clickbait kind of add on there yeah, we're good at this uh a certain division is going to get its own string of house shows coming up i have nothing to add to that wrestle kingdom 12 gonna have a broadcast outside of new japan world that's exciting we got a bit we stole from our slack channel because we we asked you, the listeners, and then when we couldn't find enough listeners, we asked people who don't listen. Right. We said, help us give you quality hashtag content. Right. And part of that, and, you responded with some great pin mail. Yeah. As always. Thank you for the pin mail. Uh, and then we've got two bumbling ad reads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Come for the news, stay for the ad reads. Which, much like randy orton come completely out of nowhere they usually do of course you can usually tell because if it's going to be a really bad transition i start giggling before it they go you know what tom it always starts with you know what tom every yeah. time like I tell. if we're actually at a tailgate or something like that if jc turns to me and goes you know what tom i'm expecting an ad read yeah irl it's just people that already are on the inside anyway. They're like, we don't, we don't need to buy your shit. Shut up. <laughs> so which which news item do we want to start with, Tom? They're all, uh, they're all pretty tertiary tier news items this week. Because Raw and SmackDown number... were pretty boring, so. Yeah. Number two? Number two. Speaking of two... 205 Live is going to start some house shows. Oh, who's going to go to those? I don't know. So, I really like the idea of this. And you got to look at it. I, they're going to draw NXT or less numbers. Obviously. Right. So, they're not, I mean, it's not being done for the money. Clearly. 
But with with the talent that's there, if you book it in the right cities, it'll draw really well. And if they let these guys go out there and do what they are capable of rather than what they, you know, agent the shit out of their matches to do on uh, Raw and 205 Live, it'll be a really good show. And here's the thing, too, with um, it. You got to remember that NXT house shows are not NXT TV tapings. Right. Because, like, when they go to full sale or whatever, they've got the roster packed. But if NXT is in your area and you're checking out an NXT house show, you're seeing maybe a handful of guys that you recognize from TV. But a lot of times you are actually seeing the developmental talent. Yeah. Especially if you're in the actual Florida loop. Yeah. Like the road shows are the big names, but you know, on any given Tuesday night in Fort Pierce Armory, like, <laughs> come on. So if you're if you're coming out for something like that, you're gonna come out for the actual polished guys that you see on TV at least. Like, I mean, if you go to see, say, like Ring of Honor shows and things like that, those that, that's what's gonna draw people in. You know, people actually would want to see. Cedric Alexander wrestle a 15 minute match. Yeah. I'd be down for that. You, yeah. You're going to want to see. Yeah. Mustafa Ali and those type of people actually do the matches, not TV matches, but actual matches that made names for them. So maybe they're trying to capitalize a little bit on, well, what was good with that before well the cruiserweight classic did really well people enjoyed those matches well we'll be able to do matches that that kind of length on the road yeah and you know we're still paying these guys it's not a you know it's not like they're not going to be high you know they're not going to be televised matches or anything like that so it's not going to be a huge budget on uh production or anything like that they're just going to be doing a traditional house show with, you know, maybe a screen or whatever, but mm-hmm. simple stuff. And it's not going to cost them that much money. They're already paying these guys. So why not Let's see if we can make a few bucks out of it? Yeah. Like I said, they just got to be conscious of where they book these shows. Cause you try to go to Corpus Christi and run a two Oh five live show. 35 people are showing up. Yeah. Just... Looking for Gino Hernandez. I mean, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's been dead for 30 years. Yeah. I think one of these shows is in Poughkeepsie. Like, that's traditionally a super strong market for wrestling. Poughkeepsie, Poughkeepsie was where so the good. old WWF Saturday shows would get taped. Yep. So, they're used to crappy wrestling. <laughs> so, it's an, interesting, it's an interesting it's an interesting concept. I'm interested to see where they go with it. I mean... They got plenty of money, so. <laughs> Again, these guys are under contract. Why not? You know, yep. let's. And what's let, also let, what ahead. also is kind of an interesting point to this if this whole rumor news item that's been reported about them supposedly doing this Facebook show after SmackDown comes to fruition, that if they're touring 205, they can just film matches wherever they are give that show a totally different look and feel and a more kind of guerrilla style. And then yeah. they have the arena Tuesday night after SmackDown for Facebook live show. I don't know. Yeah. It I mean, could be a test for that. That's the, only, that's the only th- other thing I could think of as, a, as a piece of logic for why. Yeah. I mean, anything to kind of get away from, the live aspect of 205. Yeah, because it's... Those crowds are so dead by then. They've seen the people they want to see, which is terrible to say, but that's because they 205 has been booked so poorly, that whole division. I mean, it is. But they're a special attraction just the same way that the women are a special attraction. It's not... It's not the mainstream. Right. Which is fine. You're You're going to have a core audience for that. It's fine, but... You're also basically begging people to stay by giving them a dark match, usually (laughs) after the two of my tapings, which makes for a hella long night. 
because you got to figure you're doing then. I mean, the wrestlers are getting to it's long for the people that are coming to the matches. It's long for the wrestlers because you're going. But eight to ten for Smackdown, then. Mm-hmm. It's 205 an hour long show. It's an hour it's long. It's an hour. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So then you're going 10 to 11 for 205. And then you got to give them another 10, 12 minute match. Right. As a dark after that. So by the time, you know, everybody starts rolling out, it's almost 1130. Plus the, the actual event starts, you know, half an hour before because there's a dark match before the actual show starts. On USA Network. Right. Yeah. Have you, like, I went to a live Raw last year, I think it's 2016, in Greensboro. That was a long night. People well, yeah. say it's a long night in the building. I was like, yeah, it's fine. No, I was exhausted by the time I left. I mean, I went to, I haven't gone to a live Raw in a while, like, back to Attitude Error. But that still was three hours, and then before that, you had what was it? Sunday night? Well, not not heat. I don't know what taped before that. Velocity or metal or whatever. Yeah, show. One of those where they where they taped two two matches for that. Jacked. You generally have a dark match before that. Whoever was getting their tryout that that week, uh, and since I usually went to either Garden or Nassau Coliseum shows, we usually had a tryout match just because of the area that was one of the places. I mean, I got to see like two Steve Carino tryout matches, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, a couple other people I can't remember, but, but yeah, I mean, you're getting there and, you know, it's like basically seven o'clock they're starting up and, So you're getting there, you know, beforehand, you want to get any food if you're going to get it, merch and that type of thing. So you're getting there like at six and then you're not leaving until like after 11. It's like, oh, my God. Yeah. Yeah. We just gave a rousing promo for why you should buy tickets to Raw or SmackDown in your area. Yes. (laughs) Camp out ahead of time. Right. Buy your tickets early. Um, let's do number three. We'll, we'll leave number one for last. Okay. Because we teased it. Because we did good tease. I'm proud of that. Yeah. Uh, Wrestle Kingdom 12. Live January 4th from the Tokyo Dome in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, oh, that Tokyo. Yeah, that Tokyo. Not Tokyo, Minnesota. Okay. <laughs> Which now I want to Google and see if that exists. If not, I'm going to build one. Um, Wrestle Kingdom 12, live on New Japan World at 2 in the morning. <laughs> That's an Start. odd. On a weekday. Yeah. That's a bad time for a lot of folks, especially in the United States who like to see this show. In Japan, it's fine. In, yeah, it's perfectly fine because, you know, the magic of time zones. But uh, Access TV, the uh, cable home in the U.S. for New Japan. Uh, going to air Wrestle Kingdom 12 in a three-hour special on the 6th at 8 p.m., so only two days later. Quickest turnaround they've done. Last year, they broke it up into, I think, three different weeks. They broke the broke it up and used it as the one-hour shows. Started with the uh, Omega Okada match first, uh, and then did two more weeks of select matches. But this way, it kind of sounds like they might be trying to put the whole show together in one night for you to watch in prime time. Now, did they announce whether or not they're – I don't want to say redubbing it because they're not redubbing it, but whether they're going to use the Access commentary? It is going to be the Jim Ross, Josh Barnett commentary, not the Kevin Kelly, uh, Don Callis commentary. Yeah. Okay. Yes. By the way, a complete unrelated side note, um, I generally – peek behind the curtain. I generally run some kind of WWE network thing in the background as I record this. Uh, for reasons we'll eventually get to later, 
uh, I chose the 1996 WCW World War III pay-per-view and had totally forgotten that, one, Chris Jericho at this time is a babyface managed by Teddy Long. Hmm. And he is wrestling in this match heel referee Nick Patrick. <laughs> Why? Oh, WCW. Oh, Jesus. And Nick Patrick is a hell of a heel referee. Yeah. I mean, one, because he's he's huge. Like, he's bigger than Jericho. Yeah. So that's just kind of the funny thing about it. I mean, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Nick Patrick's the son of, uh, I want to say the grappler, uh, some masked wrestler. But uh, son of a wrestler and just became a referee. I don't know if it's because of injury or whatever, but he ended up just being a straight referee. But I mean, like, and was a referee for the longest time. But yeah, he did a heel referee gimmick, joined the NWO for a period of time. But yeah, he's in this match and wrestling in like a sleeveless referee shirt but wrestling boots and bumping like mad so good on you nick patrick so moving back to good wrestling um (laughs) if you get access you should watch this show if you're one of the dozens it's not on spectrum cable in this area unfortunately but i know it's on Uh, direct tv if you are a streamer, it is on Sling. It is not, I do not believe it is on uh, Hulu Live, which is what I'm using. Cheap plug. Yeah. Uh, but it, it, it's, on, it's on several of the streaming platforms. Yeah. And, and again, so, too, you just watch it on demand on New Japan World, too. Which, from what I'm to understand, they're start they're slowly ramping up their English Mm -hmm. uh, front end so that it's a little bit easier for gaijin like us to understand. Translating all the promos now. Uh, So it's good. Yeah, there's a a new YouTube channel that New Japan has solely for English. So that's kind of cool. Yeah. Watch it. It's going to be a fun show. We'll definitely talk about it here. Yeah. And give you plenty of warning for those of you that don't care. So you don't have to listen. Spoiler alert, it's January 4th. (laughs) This is your warning now. (laughs) Yep. Uh, Then our last kind of news item. um, The musical godfather of the WWE, Jim Johnston, was released this past week. He did all the themes you know and love from the Attitude Era and before. Uh, yeah, the CFOs have been doing everything recently. There hasn't. I don't know that when the last time there was actually a, a Jim Johnston theme uh, that I can think of. Yeah, there's there's pretty much three eras of music in WWF. There's the Jimmy Hart era, mm-hmm. which eventually I think it was Jimmy Hart and Jim Johnston. A lot of it was basically yeah. kind of worked together, and then when. Jimmy Hart left and went to WCW. Jim Johnston became pretty much the sole uh, composer, I guess, of WWF themes until recently. I mean, and I guess kind of in between now and the the CFOs era, there's uh, they would get outside like bands and. I guess the WWE music label or whatever to get Mm -hmm. the occasional mainstream band or whatever to compose theme music like Motorhead. And uh, they used uh, Rob Zombie for Edge. And Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of, it's kind of sad. I guess the way it kind of, it seems is that his contract had come to an end and they just chose not to renew, but you know, they weren't using him. So 
I mean, it makes sense. Yeah, you're gonna, I mean, you're gonna find a new voice for a new generation with the music. So I mean, it's CFOs. People complain a lot about you know, and it, I mean, it's the truth. They do you know basically thirty, forty-five second loops that are the that are the music. But uh, there's none of their <laughs> themes that I hate. But here's the thing: wrestling theme music is meant to be 45 seconds long, for the yeah. lack of a better term, because that's all it is. You're going down, you're making your entrance, and that's it. This isn't ECW where the Sandman comes down and takes the entire Enter Sandman song to enter the ring. <laughs> yeah, you want that because good... he has to drink three beers. Yeah, you want that good 30, 45 second recognizable loop that people will memorize and they know what the hook is and that's just so they know who the wrestler is that's all you need and cfos has been doing that i mean you gotta i mean just look at you know bobby Roode, shinsuke nakamura aj i mean yeah it's if you those are I, iconic themes yeah you know? and if you've never seen it i think all of those three that we just mentioned, uh, if you go to WWE's YouTube page and just search for CFOs, they actually have, for four or five different themes, they actually sat down with them and they showed like how they put it together and what the inspiration was and talked to the guys, uh, the two guys that are CFOs uh, that did it. So, kind of a neat little, they're about like five minutes each. It's kind of a cool watch. Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing. Yeah, but yeah so, so it's the end of an era and it's sad, but... uh. Again, it's not like we're – it's going to change anything today. So, so thank you, Jim Johnston, for yeah. being the, the the soundtrack to part of my youth. What he said. Yeah. And you know what, Tom? What's that, JC? I'm, I'm feeling really nostalgic about these songs. And I really oh. – I really need to find a copy of WWF The Music Volume 4. I think I have one in my CD pile somewhere. but Okay, but I want, I was, I want a new one, a new-ish one. And oh, I wanna, yeah. My, I mine's sh- probably... I, I want it shipped to me in two days. I wasn't sure if you actually wanted me to talk or not, but okay. You want it shipped to you in two days. In two days, Tom. <laughs> you weren't letting well, me finish. How would you do that, JC? Well, I have a hunch that if I went to cheatersneverpen.com and I clicked... That, that's a... Yeah? That just sounds ridiculous. Why okay. would you go to cheatersneverpen.com? Well, because on the front of cheatersneverpen.com, there's a button that says buy on Amazon. Oh. oh, okay. And Amazon has everything. So I'm pretty sure if I click that button, it's going to take me to a page that, that legit is amazon.com. Doesn't look any different. Doesn't act any different. And then I can search for WWF The Music Volume 4, or I can search for WWF Forcible Entry, which were all the, the covers of the theme songs by bands. Right? Is that That's the right name of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Or maybe so. even the Tough Enough soundtrack. Uh, Ooh. Yeah, there we go. Uh, I could put all those in one cart and have them shipped to me via Prime in two days, and that would be awesome. But the best part, since I clicked the button on CheatersNeverPin.com, the Buy on Amazon button, uh, and I'm buying this Christmas gift for myself. Uh, it's going to kick a few pennies back to Cheaters Never Pin uh, to just pay for things. That'd be great. I would. And the best part is everyone at home can do this too. Oh, you okay. Any of your holiday shopping from Amazon, don't type AMA. Stop yourself. Type in CheatersNeverPin.com into your browser. Click the buy on Amazon button. Do all your shopping like normal. And we get a cut of we get a cut of the pie. It's a small cut, but something's better than nothing. Yes. And we appreciate you supporting Cheaters Never Pin by using the Buy on Amazon button on CheatersNeverPin.com. All right. Do we do we want to do pin mail or the or the the, the other bit first? Yeah, let's do pin mail. Okay. Pin mail. Pin mail. Pin. Oh, it gets like sexier every week, Tom. Hey, I can't control that. <laughs> All right, so we got a few this week. Uh, we'll start with the OG El Patron at tweets from Seth, patron number one. 
El Patron By the way, numero uno. you too could be a patron and then get your pin mail questions answered first. It's true. We'll tell you how after pin mail. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he's got three questions. And since he is the OG El Patron, he gets three questions. Absolutely. Also, since Twitter is now 280 characters. <laughs> uh, number one. There is no black straps on Raw. <laughs> so, grammar aside. Uh, fashion faux pas or fashion forward? Uh, see, I had forgotten that there is the universal title. Because I never <laughs> see the fucking thing. <laughs> Issue number one. Um, I vote fashion forward. I mean, they're all different, and that's fine. Like, I yeah, don't, I, mean, I don't really care that much about the I mean, leather color. The intercontinental strap has been multicolored for some time now, so mm-hmm. I I like the fact that there are different colors, and it's not everything is either red or blue. Oh god, like, yeah. And I had seen somebody mention something about that, like why don't why don't we call it, you know, why don't you just get rid of the names Intercontinental and U.S. title and just call it the Raw title and the the SmackDown title? And, yeah, no, just there's at least some history there. It's like we, we've managed to erase a decent amount of history and lineage and that type of thing, but at least keep that a little bit. Yep. Um, is 2018 the return of the 40-man Royal Rumble? No. God, I hope not. I don't think it is. I don't see a reason for it to be. The roster is mean, the, the not any bigger than it was last year. No, they'll find... I mean, they still have other matches. Yeah, for, remember, Royal Rumble yeah, will last 13 and a half hours. So. Yeah, so you got to have that opening match that only 14 people will see inside the arena. Right, yep. you got to have the, the three pre-show matches, the... Let's see, it's Rumble, so what, like five undercard matches and then the Rumble. Everybody's got to defend their respective titles. Yes. This is a good I mean, I, oh, I, I'm, I'm good with increasing it to 40 if, for whatever reason, they it brings back the random old superstars. Right. Because that, that pissed me off this year, that we got absolutely no... No returns. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, the other reason there will not be a 40-man Royal Rumble is because that is too long and will not accommodate the Women's Royal Rumble. There you go. Uh, would you rather go to a 205 Live house show two hours away or a TNA taping one hour away? In this scenario, you are forced to choose 205 Live. Yeah. It's not even a question. One, road trip. I like I yeah. like long drives. I don't mind. Um, you know, I'm also the person that used to drive from Long Island to Philadelphia for house shows. So, oh, yep, which we've covered in our Tom's yes. ECW stories edition in the archives. Available in the archives. Yeah. Roll Tide. Also, um, also, it's not TNA. So there you go. I don't know who is is TNA. Like who who's there? People. Laurel Van Ness is the women's champion, but she's trying to get out of it. Legit. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a thing that's happening. They have two new executives. Bobby uh, Lachey and EC3 are the only guys I know there. Bobby Lachey? You mean Lashley? Yeah. Bobby Lachey. Is that someone? Is that a boy band name? Yeah, probably. Yeah. Lash LaRue, is he there? I No. I'm going to. I, who, who the fuck knows? I haven't watched TNA in months. Because I prefer to. I don't. I don't have enough booze in my house at any moment to deal with two hours of impact. Wait, if it's if it's Bobby Lashley, then but he was. That was his name in WWE. So shouldn't he be like Lobby Bashley? <laughs> yes. Okay. He will now, I actually like that name will, much better. He will henceforth be referred to on this podcast as Lobby Bashley. <laughs> uh, that that's that's my tennis gimmick. <laughs> <laughs> I 
If Barry Darso can have a golfer gimmick, <laughs> I'm calling the tennis gimmick. <laughs> that's like a DDT pro gimmick right there. That is. That's good. I like that. I, I'm going to Japan. Let's go. Tom, when we get big enough like MLW to start our own promotion, I fully expect you to be Commissioner Lobby Bashley. Yes. Love it. Coming uh, out in the short shorts and the the collared shirt and <laughs> headband. Jesus. Then, Gimmick see, tennis racket. Then Cornette comes out of the crowd, grabs the racket from you, and yells, That's my gimmick, motherfucker! And beats you over the head with it. Yeah. Good show. So expect that in 15 years when we're making millions of dollars off the podcast uh, and start our own promotion. There we go. Yep. Uh, from my mother. <laughs> At least your mom listens. So, yeah, it's true. Uh, this is this is one that'll take a few minutes to answer, and I'll say we'll we'll stick to three. We'll stick to three matches on this one. What do you predict will be the marquee matches for WrestleMania 2018? So I, I look at that. Usually they there are three that they push heavily. Um, are we gonna go back and forth with these or? Yeah, let's do that. That'll work. I'll start. Okay. Lesnar reigns. Okay. I have no reason to believe otherwise at this point. So we'll see. Um. Triple H angle. Yeah, forgot about that. Uh Oh, the four horse women versus the four horse women. Mm. We have video of Rousey training with Natalia this week, so it's happening, folks. Um uh, we got to have something for Lesnar. See, I'm trying to think of something for Cena. I don't think you do Cena's styles again. And I don't think the belt's going back on gender. Because if gender had the belt, it'd be Cena gender. Right. It may still be Cena gender. It's possible. Just not with the belt. Yep. Um, yeah, I'll say that. Cena gender. There you go. That's my That's my third one. AJ Nakamura. Oh, yeah. Duh. Blinked on that shit. Well, you blanked on it because you're just assuming that they're not going to give it to us anyway. Yeah, that's true. That's a pretty solid top six, actually, right there. I would pay nine ninety five a month for that. I would. Absolutely. So there you go. The only one I believe is actually going to happen is Four Horsewomen versus Four Horsewomen. The rest of them, I don't have enough evidence to prove any of those are occurring yet. And the the probably the second one, second closest I would think of would be Triple H Angle, but that's all dependent on how healthy Angle is at this point. Right. Right. We'll learn. We'll learn. The picture will start to fill back up the a week from Monday because that's Lesnar's next appearance back is the 18th. So that'll start to shape his Rumble opponent, and that'll give us an idea. So, all right. Next question from our buddy Noah's Ark at Inlock716 on the Twitter. Do you think it's possible Brian has already been cleared by WWE or is close to, and this current angle with Shane is leading to an in-ring return? By the way, I'm okay with Kane's talk. Just be nice to see them doing a little better. We agree. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to depress myself again. No, this, so. is a hap- this is the happy show on the network. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Meg, Meg's on the other show, so oh, that's true. she's she, she's as close to sunshine as you can get, I think, next to you. Next to me, yeah. Because, you know, trademark, brand, right, all that. T-shirt. Uh, I, it's so hard to say. Because this is a tough one. I think I do. I think it's possible. Yes. To answer the, your question exactly the way it's written. Yes, I think it is possible. Do I think it's likely? It's hard. It's hard to say. 
I, I really don't know. I'm going to go out on my limb here since I'm, I'm assuming Noah's Ark actually wants an answer. It's not going to happen. I mean, I lean towards that. You're not going to see Daniel Bryan wrestle in a WWE ring. Yeah. I lean towards that, but my heart just goes, he will. He'll be back. Don't cry anymore when you watch the Daniel Bryan documentary. I didn't say he's not going to wrestle again. I'm just saying you're not going to see him in WWE ring. That doesn't count, then. He didn't actually wrestle. Yeah. He'll do at least one more Ring of Honor match. Yeah. Maybe he'll do a match for Wrestle Kingdom 13. But. Against Kenny Omega. (laughs) Yeah. But, yeah, I, I, I don't think he's completely done, especially if he's supposedly got his own doctor that's telling him he can. And WWE is just trying to cover their own ass. Yeah, I, and I, <clears throat> I tend to side on that, too. I just don't want to believe it. They don't want to be the one. Nope. And I can't blame them for that. I mean, they've caught enough shit as it is, and... And I do think that Vince legitimately cares about him. But Oh, yeah. So if there is that question, I mean, and he cares enough to the point where he's going to keep give. you know, he still has a job there. Oh, he will he's always still, have a job there. Yeah. And they will keep him employed as long as possible if that's what he's willing to do. But, but he if, said he's not. Yeah, so. Uh, and final pin mail uh, from our buddy over at the Cheaters Never Win podcast, Eric Ressler. Is Woken Matt WWE's way to make it their own while not changing a damn thing? Yes. That is absolutely why it's Woken and not Broken. So you can do the exact same gimmick under a different title that they own. Yeah, that plus the fact that I I have an issue with, you know, he was broken before. It's just if you're if you have the gimmick and then you don't use the gimmick for X period of time and then you bring back the gimmick, calling it the same thing is just there's there's technically it's a it's not McDonald's. It's McDowell's. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, it's not the Big Mac. It's the Big Mac. It's you have seen Coming to America, right, JC? We'll go with that. Jesus Christ! <laughs> I think I did many, many years ago, and I don't remember any of it. So <sighs> that can be added to the list of movies I haven't seen. Was yeah. that a Twitter discussion or was that an on this podcast discussion? It's been both. People yelled at you online. Oh, no, that's never happened to me before. Call the fucking newspapers so people can't read it, and then they read the article online about it instead. Yeah, I've got Luke DeCock on my speed dial. Oh. Yeah. Anyway. Moving right along. Oh, yeah. So, Tom... If people want yes, to guarantee to have their pen mail read at the top of pen mail, uh, how can they do that? I'm glad you asked, JC. Ooh, I know. I've got all the right questions. But don't change so, the answers. Wrestling. So if you go to cheatersniverpin.com, and, and you've already done this probably earlier to do your Amazon.com shopping. Mm-hmm. But yeah. if you go to... Uh, cheatersnumberpin.com, you'll notice that right next to that Amazon button, slightly to the left, is a Patreon button. And if you click on that Patreon button, you'll see that you can contribute uh, anywhere from a dollar to more uh, per month to this podcast and the Section 328 podcast family, which includes our podcast, which you're listening to now. And the Cheaters Never Win podcast, which was recorded earlier tonight at the Section 328 World Headquarters. And just the random stuff that our collective group does. Uh, 
but your contributions um, go towards the purchase of equipment, uh, website hosting, uh, podcast hosting, the whatever software crap JC uses to actually make me sound like a human being. It's all pirated. Help JC stay out of jail. I use Audacity, which, by the way, if you need to use audio editing software, it's all, use Audacity. It's free. It's awesome. There you go. Okay, so apparently we don't need your money, so don't go to Patreon.com. <laughs> but do give us your money. Give me all your money. At least if you consider contributing to us and the rest of Section 328, and but you let us know and you say, oh, well, you know, you're really who I'm contributing to. I don't really care about Section 328. I care about Chief is Never Pin. We'll consider you more of our L Patrons, and your pin mail questions will get answered first. So consider that a special perk of being an L Patron. So yeah. just go to Cheetos Never Pin, click on the Patreon button, consider contributing whatever you feel comfortable with a month, and help us out. We'd greatly appreciate it. We do. Okay. So to wrap this show up today, we got two bits we stole from people in our Slack thread. Which we thank should... you once again, Slack. <clears throat> yes, thank you. And we'll give credit to the people that uh, came up with them. Which one nah. do you want to start with? Oh, right. We did two. Um, yeah, we did. Uh, let's do the... Uh, the big one first? The... The no the let's do the Tom one. Okay. So this would the one come I'm, the one I'm less prepared for. Okay, cool, better. Uh, that, it's entertaining. Yeah, that always works well on this show. So this one comes from our friend uh, Tom over on the the Twitter at Ocarina of Tom. And the whole goal of this and this is going to be this week's pen mail topic. I'm telling you now. How about that? So. I want you to write in hashtag pin mail under this premise. You get to choose push, bury, fire, or call up. Out of, and it's not like we're going to give you four names and you, 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 you've picked them. It's the entire active roster is eligible. Yeah, this isn't F. Mary Kill. This is the entire collective group. Yes, the entire active roster of WWE. Obviously, and NXT, because you have a call-up. Which is WWE. Right, but... So 205 Live as well. Let me make sure we add that in. Yes, I guess theoretically you could call up someone from 205 Live to the main roster. Yes. I guess. Um, okay. So we're going to give you ours, and then uh, for this week's pin mail topic, before next week, uh, write us using hashtag pin mail. Who on the active roster you'd like to push, bury, fire, and call up? So I'll go first since Tom's not prepared. And I'm doing this off the top of my head because I'm not prepared either. Uh, my push is Finn Balor because of course it is. Oh, I have fallen down. I, 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 I was sitting and I still fell down. I mean, I think they're doing that now, you know, when he goes fucking 50-50 with Bo Dallas. But fuck me, what do I know? <sighs> It's a wrestling match, JC. Shut the fuck up, Tom. You don't know what you're talking about. No, I've never, I've never <laughs> seen wrestling before. I just completely walked into a room where a podcast is taking place, and I'm just saying <laughs> random words to make myself make sense. Yep, seems about okay. right. <laughs> um, for Barry, man, fucking. It's time to bury Bray Wyatt for a little while. You know I love him. It's time. And I don't mean this isn't permanent. This is in this moment, right now. Bury him. Because he needs to go away. You gotta freshen that up. Fire. Ooh. Oh, that's a tough one. Wait, no, it's not Enzo. 
because he contributes nothing. And I'm so sick of his fucking running his mouth all the time. I'm way over it at this point. Call up. Hmm. Call up. Let me find... I can't, I'm totally blanking on her name right now. She was in the Mae Young Classic, and I gotta find her fucking name. And I am blanking. Come on. Internet. Work with me here. Uh, oh, Rhea Ripley. There we go. It came to my head. Call up Rhea Ripley. There are, there are no Australian stars. There you go. Okay. Blew people's minds with that fourth one. I'm pulling yeah, for that, that girl strong, by the way. She's goddamn fantastic. Yeah, apparently. So okay. strongly, I totally blanked on her name. Yeah. Um, Did I stall long enough for you? Yeah. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, for push, uh, I'll go with a group that isn't getting pushed at all and I think have been completely forgotten about. And uh, go with Gallows and Anderson. Just because they need they need mic time. They're entertaining as hell. They work well. And they just writers don't know what the hell to do with them. They need to be given their own leash to work with. Mm -hmm. and, and I think independently on their own, they could come up with something strong. And I don't know. I like as much as I like uh, Cesaro and Sheamus, I'm more entertained by Gallows and Anderson. So you've got the stiffness there. And that's not to say that Gallows and Anderson can't work stiff on their own. I wouldn't mind seeing a match between the four of them, but yeah, yeah, so that's my push. Okay, I like that choice. Um, doesn't mean that they're all going to be tags, by the way. Um, Barry, and I don't know if we consider this Barry, um, but I'm burying Lesnar. Not in wow. the very okay. sense, and maybe, maybe I'm, maybe I'm cheating. I don't know, but I want the belt off of him, and I want him basically in the Undertaker kind of role of we bring him in the big four pay per views or whatever. He comes in, does the occasional appearance or whatever on Raw to kind of build it up, but that's it. He's not a champion that people are striving to battle against. He's an attraction and nothing more. Or he's, you know, a gun for hire or something like that, that like some power figure brings out to go and because somebody's getting over on him. I can't have him as one of the the head of Raw, basically. He's the, he's the top Raw champion, and it's not working this way, so bury him in that way. I'm still going to let him win matches, but not with the push that he's basically getting. All right. Fire. Oh, I don't want anybody to lose a job, man. Um, oof. I hate to do it, but it's time. I'm firing Kane. I almost said that. Uh, also, it works because it's firing Kane. Yeah. There's Brimstone involved as well. Oh, but, Tom! Uh, he's, yeah. Kane... Kane's also a wrestler that works fine for the occasional 
and it's it's almost like a legends tour that you need you need to be doing. It's it's neat to have him come out every once in a while, and that's fine. I mean, and he's given a hell of a lot to the company, which is just fascinating when when you actually do the math and realize how fucking long he's been with WWE. For what should have been a throwaway gimmick. But he's he's got his own thing now. He's running for office. His body's pretty well broken. And, and he's the way that he's working now in this feud with Strowman. It's very shoehorned in. There's no rhyme or reason as to why he's back necessarily. He's just back because, oh, you're a monster. Well, I'm a monster. It's uh... So it's it's almost confusing as to why he's there. And I don't know. It just I'd, I'd rather see him kind of finish it up just the same as what Taker did and those guys. So fire with. Uh, a lot of time, I guess, so that we can prepare and exit. Not like you're out the door today or whatever, but yeah, that's my firing. Okay. And as a call up, hmm. I'm kind of Torn, but I guess I'd go with Almas right now. No, 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 I'm taking that back. Okay. I want Alistair Black. I want Alistair Black. Yeah, that's a good one too. Just because I think that gimmick could work as long as they don't completely fuck it up, which WWE they will. <laughs> but there's a lot of NXT gimmicks that work because it's the smaller crowds and it gets a, it's easy to get over with a smaller crowd. Right. But Black is a badass, just in general. I think the only issue you'd have is the fact that he's a lot smaller than you realize when you put him up against, you know, larger competition. So you'd have to protect him against monsters and that type of thing. Have him face regular sized wrestlers, I guess. Keep him away from the Strowmans and that type of thing. And Aleister Black Seth Rollins feud. Oh. oh yeah. That'd be fun. That would be fun. So it won't happen. Yeah. Okay, those are good ones. So yeah. Write into us, hashtag pinmail on Twitter, at Cheaters in VR pin, uh, your Pushberry Fire call up. Your PFBC. Your pretty bullshit fucking comments. <laughs> there we go. Alright. Last slack bit. We'll go through this one really fast. Because we're running yep. long for a, new, for a light news week. Uh, you explain this one. Because you found it. Well, you found both of these. But. Oh, I have to look this up again. Okay, um, I can read what you wrote. No, I got it up here. Um, Andrew asked us this one. Um, basically, you're starting a wrestling promotion in the 90s, and you get to take three wrestlers each from ECW, WCW, and WWF. He said WWE, it's WWF. <laughs> <laughs> Which wrestlers do you choose? Okay. Who would you want to be your inaugural heavyweight? He wrote this very odd, so I have to I have to try that again. Who would you want in your inaugural heavyweight title match? And who would be your first champion? Okay. All right. So, do you want to go first this time? I guess since I read it, I get to go first. Yeah. Oh, that's weird. They just showed Sean Waltman, and he doesn't have any facial hair. Ah. But he's six-pack, but he doesn't have the beard or anything, so it's just... Yeah. Weird. 
Yeah. Um, okay. So this is why I'm watching World War Three because <laughs> I went with 96 because I didn't want to necessarily jump around and go, okay, here's the guy from 1991 and here's the guy from 94 and here's the guy from 98. Plus, ECW didn't really exist in the way that most people recognize it until 95. So 96 was pretty much where everything was picking up. WCW got big. Um, WWF was starting the Attitude Era, kind of inching towards it. And the ECW was almost ready for pay-per-view, but getting a lot of publicity. So for WCW, um, I went with Ric Flair. I went with, against my better work rate judgment, Hogan. And I went with the Giant. Um, mainly because I wanted, well, Flair could still work his ass off. Uh, I wanted Hogan's, like, name recognition. Because he was still putting asses in the seats at that time. Mm -hmm. And, uh... The Giant was a hell of a talent at that point because he was so young, so still agile for such a huge guy. Yeah. And just watching him in that kind of 95, 96, 97 era was just like you can see why Vince wanted him so fucking badly because he was. He was incredibly agile. He was a pretty damn good worker. He wasn't completely an idiot on the mic. He wasn't great, but he wasn't horrible either. So those were the three I went for there. Uh, with WWF, or, or do you want to give your WCW and we'll go back and forth okay. like that? Yeah, so I went 97 on all of my stuff, just so people okay. know. So I picked Sting, DDP, and Booker T. Okay. So we went completely different there. Yeah, we went in totally different directions. No reasons. I just looked at the roster, and those are the three names. I was like, yeah, I'd take those three. They're just the first yeah. names that jumped off the page at me. And it's weird, because I had trouble going with... Because I looked at TDP, too, and I thought about it, and I'm just like... Where was he at? at, at well, again, I was working 96, so he was still kind of... I think that was still around maybe TV championship DDPs kind of working his way up to regular rotation. But it was so weird because DDP was around WCW forever. He was, he, him and Sting were, I guess to an extent Luger too, but pretty much him and Sting were those remnants from the early nineties days where everything was so horrible. But it's, DDP's story is just incredible how he managed to stick around so long and at the age of like 45 or whatever was when he hit his prime. Mm -hmm. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Okay. Uh, WWF, there's really only three answers here. Um, Brett Austin and Sean. Same three I have. <laughs> Check, check, and check. I mean, they, and especially if you can kind of eliminate ego somehow. I mean, I'm just picking the talent I want, and those were the my promotions. My promotions fuck to begin with to have like Hogan and Shawn Michaels, and eventually who I'm going to select from ECW, but right. We're, we're we're pretend booking here. We're not we're not worrying about all the problems in the back. So you pick those. So then I guess yep. We go to ECW, ECW. Uh, where I'm going to take uh, go a little bit off the board here. Uh, Shane Douglas check. Uh, I am taking Stevie Richards. Okay. 
and I am taking the Eliminators. Ooh, okay. All right. I took Sh- just. Oh, I, had, I say I had Shane Douglas because mm-hmm. he's Shane Douglas. Right. Uh, Bam Bam Bigelow. Okay, so yeah, ninety-seven. Bam Bam's not there in ninety-six, right? And RVD, Mister Monday Night himself. Yeah. Yeah, the, the, there were. A f- I could say a few right answers at that point. I mean, if you really wanted to, you could bounce 95 and turn around and go, I'll take Malenko and yeah, Eddie Guerrero. And... I was looking at that and I was like, <sighs> but I didn't. So I went with those three guys. And it's, it's weird to realize like how short a lot of their tenures were. Like Eddie didn't Eddie and, um, Rey Mysterio, well, Eddie didn't spend that much time in the ECW. I I swore that he spent a decent amount of time there. He didn't. Uh, Jericho spent even less. Right. Jericho was there only for like a few months. But, and both, before both the, like, WCW pretty much just watched ECW tapes and went, okay, yeah, those guys had a good match. We'll take them. Mm -hmm. Uh, But, I went with the Eliminators because, God, I loved that team when they weren't completely fucked up. Like, I mean, Perry Saturn was a hell of a wrestler to begin with, and John Cronus for a big man was agile as fuck. And they had a great look to them. They were just – they they had great double team moves, and they were, for a period of time, I think, the best tag team in wrestling. Okay. Um, Shane was Shane, like you said. Uh you know, I owned franchise Shane Douglas merch, so I was a fan, obviously. Stevie, I thought, was just thoroughly entertaining, and he was a good worker. Like, he wasn't necessarily a main event guy, but, I mean, he was a lower tier guy. He could, he was entertaining. He bumped like hell. And, like, I don't know. They, they don't all have to be main eventers. So. I needed some entertainment value too. Yeah. Okay, so what were your what was your uh, championship match and who won? Um I went with Shawn Michaels against Ric Flair. Okay. Cuz that would have been a fun match. Was it a career threatening match, Tom? Uh, no, because Eric Bischoff isn't allowed in my promotion. <laughs> was that Bischoff that did that? I don't remember. That would have, yeah, that would have made sense. Or was that Vince? I don't, I don't know. know. Um, and Flair's taking the title. Uh, generally through some kind of tomfoolery. I don't know if I have who's running with Flair at this point. I don't have a nine-man promotion. So ideally, I've got some other group that's rolling with Flair, a horseman-like group. But Flair is the dirtiest player in the game, and I like him just having the title and all these like guys fighting to try to get to that stage at that point. Mm-hmm. Okay. Who won? Sorry, I might have totally missed when you said this. Flair still wins the title. Okay. I'm sorry, I, I kind of smashed that together. Uh, Sean puts on a hell of a match, and Sean's attempting to play babyface here. Um, but Flair, dirtiest player in the game, manages to do something, whether it's brass knocks or feet on the ropes or Outside interference. I like the brass knucks idea. That's always fun. Yeah. So I couldn't pick a one-on-one match. I'm with a fatal four-way. Of course not. No. Uh, so Shane Douglas versus Sting versus Sean versus Brett. I mean, because who wouldn't want to see that? And Sean walks away. 
as the inaugural champion because he's Shawn Michaels. Because it's 1997 Shawn Michaels, so he managed to yeah, he use pitched, connections. He pitched and, and complained enough to get the belt. Yeah. yeah. So don't cry when two months later, when you're asking him to do a job, he suddenly loses his smile. and Him and Hunter in the office complaining before, you know. All right. Well, I think that uh, that covers. Thank you for all of your pin mail and your bit ideas and everything. Thank you, thank you, thank yeah. you, people out there in podcast land. Give us more. We're always here. Yeah. Cheaters in DR pin. Uh, so yeah, Tom, tell the people where they can find you on the internet. Then. Uh, go to the Twitter machine at Mr. Workrate at Mr. Workrate. Um. Uh, you can find our Slack channel, but you have to be invited, so yeah. don't bother. Just just use Twitter. It's fine. Ask I'm, us. I'm in a better mood now. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Until the next hockey game. Oh, so yeah. t- tomorrow? I can't even remember the schedule. My brain is so fried right now from work. Don't care. Not, yeah. not looking. Right. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at jcbobbitt, J-C-B-O-B-B-I-T-T. Uh Write at me, yell things, tell me how wrong I am about Finn Balor like some people did this week on Twitter. No one associated with this podcast, but thanks, random internet. The search is hashtag raw. Uh, you can find the show on Twitter, at CheatersNVRPin. Of course, always write to us throughout the week with whatever you think is going on in pro wrestling, uh, your thoughts and opinions uh, using the hashtag PinMail. Uh, we're on Facebook. Uh, search Cheaters Never Pin there. And give us a big blue thumbs up. Uh, and then, of course, join our Patreon. Just go to cheatersneverpin.com, click the Patreon button on the front page, and give us your money. Booyah. So next week, we'll get you ready for Clash of Champions. It's finally time for another pay-per-view. More sweet, sweet content. Yes. And then the week after that, we'll talk about what happened at Clash of Champions. Like Sammy and... Kevin Owens getting fired. Yeah, that'll be fun. Because that's on the line. Yeah, it was a uh, contract-threatening match. <laughs> Career-threatening match. <sighs> anyway, I think that's all we got for tonight, though. So thank you for listening, as always. And uh, yeah, I don't have anything else witty to say, so we'll just end it like we usually do. I'm JC. I'm Tom. And we'll catch you on the flip side.